Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thought it'd be a good time for a behind the scenes uh, update on the fish room. Let's take a quick little walkthrough and see where things are at. And uh, you can give me your tips and comments below. So let's go ahead and, uh, and jump right into it. Over my shoulder, you notice a uh, project board and a progress board. And uh, this is where I'll write down ideas for videos, but also I keep track of what's going on with each tank with a sort of a floor plan here. So you can tell um, when I've moved fish around or when I've uh, serviced, swapped out socks or serviced a tank or a filter. I just keep a record here, so it makes it real easy for me to know when was the last time I did something. Here's that great sign by Vinny. Vinny's Aquatics on YouTube, they're a professional sign making company. I can't actually use it uh, completely. It has a, a light that goes around the edge, you see that? If I use that while I'm filming, what'll happen is it'll overwhelm the uh, camera and make everything else dark. I guess I could compensate on my uh, on my Sony camera, but with the tut with the phone, you really can't do it. You can see it's actually a really nice sign, and it has a remote control that comes with it. And Vinny just did a great a great job, real professional job on that. Sometimes I want the dogs in the fish room. Sometimes I don't. They hang around here at the top, and I have a little gate that keeps them out. But very often, Jack, the uh, tricolor beagle, will come down and hang out with me. Not bad. In this 55 gallon right here. I have the a vieja that I pulled out of the um, out of the 90 gallon that you see there in the distance, and um, I pulled I pulled him out because he was getting beaten up a bit by the other viejas, and uh, I don't know if you can see him back there. He's just kind of hanging out, but this morning he was swimming around. He's eating well. He's he's recovered. He had some marks on his body. Those were all healed up. And uh, he looked really good this morning. That's a vieja, I have three viejas. This tank of course has, is lit by a beam, beams work light, has a uh, Marineland Emperor 400 on it and an expert Matic combination power head, sponge filter and bubbler has this giant Eheim 300 watt heater. Probably gonna put a smaller heater in there at some point. That thing looks really overwhelming. In here, in this, the other 55 right next to it, real mixed bag in here. I've got a uh, these little uh, dwarf rainbows. Really cute, there's about 10 of them in there. Redhead Tapahos. Electric blue Acaras, Severums, a couple Severums, a couple of those uh, redheads, a couple of the Acaras. Everybody's doing well. I got a couple green uh, green tears. This is the dominant green tear. Look at the early markings on this. This is just a little pup. Already showing some great markings for being a baby. Gets along fine with everybody else. No real antagonism or, or uh, no violence in this tank. I also have a couple chocolate cichlids just sort of keep to themselves. You can see them back there in the plants. Little chocolates. They get very big, but they're very, very calm and sweet. And one of them hangs out inside the cave. It's very cute. A little bit of driftwood in this tank. Tank's doing well. Here in the 90, you can see everyone's doing pretty well. Jack Dempsey, I think he's just a spectacular looking fish. It's a type of yeha with a lot of blue in the body, which is just beautiful, a little pink on the ends of the tail and a pattern around the head that I think is just really pretty. I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera. 
One of the Nicaraguans, the one that I thought was the female, is starting to get a little bit of a, like a nuchal, like a hump. And I don't know, does that mean that it's a male? I thought it was a female. It's red shoulder severum, usually hiding. He'll get separated out, I think, from the other fish. He gets speed up a little bit. Surimanensis, Geophagus surimanensis. There's two of them in here. And there's a uh, AC Hecli. I'd love to get a hold of an albino AC Hecli. Now what's up with that little hump on, his, on the forehead there? Might be a male. This is the one I thought was the male because he had no stripe. He just had a dot in the middle of his body. Now he's got a black stripe and some beautiful blue in the face. So I don't know. Maybe I was wrong about the sex. Here's my little planted tank project. A lot of Anubias in there. Anubias there on the driftwood, attached to the rocks. There's some other, other types of plants as well, like I think that might be a crypt. But mostly Anubias. I'm gonna try and swap out this big heater for something a little bit flatter and smaller, but for now I had to put a big heater in there because we had a little cold spell. Here's Gary. One mystery snail. Just hanging around, doing well. So there's some real wood in there, some driftwood. That's real, dri real driftwood right there, and uh, with the Anubias attached to it. And there's a uh, little zero st stone. Just, just use some uh, super glue gel, and attached some uh, Anubias on that. I want to add some more plants to this, add some different color. I had an electrician come by and quote, adding some additional power out, you know, adding some more outlets. We're probably going to add a group of four additional outlets on this wall and then run one along the wall and along the floor so that it comes out right over here where the 300 gallon is going to go. It's a bit of a mess right now, but the 300 gallon will go right here. So I'll add an additional four sockets there on a new circuit so that the chance of, of a blowing a fuse is, is, is less and less. I'm going to be doing a video on how to uh, fix this little uh, filter here this, this, so that it doesn't uh, suck fish in. So I'm going to probably run a mesh sock around it maybe even put a small piece of plastic mesh at the bottom uh, to actually block off fish being able to get up inside between the wall and the filter. If they get between the wall and the filter, this, this area in here, they get, they get trapped between the wall and the suction. If they're a nano fish, a small fish, small enough to get up in there. I think they're safe in here. I haven't found any fish in this area, but I have found fish back in here that were sucked in. So I'm going to uh, come up with a video on how to uh, uh, you know, fix that, sort of screen it off to make it safe for nano fish. I do have a few fish that you would call nano fish right over here in this tank. Apart from the embers and the lemons, there's actually a, uh, you can see the little, uh, little Danio there swimming around. There's a little Danio in there that's very small. There's a, there's a rummy nose. The lemons are doing great. They're starting to get that yellowy lemon color. I might just throw some lemons in there in that little planted tank. Maybe a few of those rummy noses. This tank is being filtered exclusively by one expert, Matic sponge uh, powerhead uh, bubbler combination. It's doing a great job. 
I left some Amazon swords in here. They're a little bit too big, I think, for the eight gallon. Here's a little five gallon unit. This is a little uh, top fin, and it's got uh, it's got Mr. Mustard in there. And ultimately, he's the one that's going to be living in that planted tank. But I wanted to get it really perfect before I brought him over. I don't want to risk losing him. And I'm glad I did, because I found out about the uh, that little death trap behind the filter. That's the sponge that, that is supposed to go in the Horizon tank. I've got it in here growing some bacteria. I also have some almond leaf, an almond leaf in here just to sort of uh, balance out what's going on in this tank along with what's going on in this tank here. So you got a nice big al almond leaf right there. Almond leaf from the aquarium co-op. So that'll I'll create a little bit of balance between these two tanks and then I can bring, uh, bring over uh, the betta, Mr. Mustard, bring them over And I'll probably use half the, t half the water in that tank, in that little five gallon. I'll do a water change on this tank here and I'll use some of the water from that half gallon just to balance out some of the pH. This is the one um, neon that was smart, smart enough not to get behind the filter. So he's, he seems to be thriving, active and eating. I'll probably get some more neons just to keep them company. I know they like to school. I'll probably pull a little bit of driftwood out of this tank here. I've got a lot of driftwood in here. I'll probably pull a little bit of the driftwood out for the 300. And I'll probably use some more of this lapis luster. I really like this substrate, Lapis Luster. A little bit of black, a little bit of beige, gray. Just one of my favorite substrates, Lapis Luster. I think you can pick it up at, at uh, hardware stores or big box stores. Tomasita. So, uh, let's take a look over at the, at the 210, everybody in here is doing well. I'm probably going to be doing a fish profile Kawingi. This is a Kawingi, this fish here. Look at the markings on that fish. Alternating yellow and blue in the body. Absolutely gorgeous fish. Look at the egg spots. Hawk is starting to get a little bit of uh, blue behind the gills. Waiting for this sand diver here to show some color. As you know from my recent video, I brought over the uh, Taiwan Reef. After giving him a break in the 55 and he seems to have assimilated very well. He's eating good color, no fin damage. Pretty, per se, a little little nip in the tail, not too bad. Look at the gar, strange looking fish. I think they're beautiful. Some of you have asked about this substrate. This is really just a combination of uh, carob sea, aragonite black, and aragonite white, and some of the black Imaginarium sand from Petco. Another recent addition, my Fusco. Look at this trout. Really coming along nice. A little gray when I first got him. Now he's starting to show beautiful patterns and color. And there's the uh, fish I just did a, a profile on. The turquoise hat. And the Insignus. Insignus has beautiful colors, I think. 
I was thinking about pulling the um, Buchochromus Noritania because he was just being a little bit, acting a little under the weather, but he seems okay. He's eating well, not hiding in the corner as much. So I think he's, so I decided instead to put the Vieja in the 55. Buchochromus spectabilis, look at that guy. Similar in color to the uh, Coenge with that alternating blue and gold. Beautiful tail. But the downward slope on the forehead, that's the, the giveaway that it's in the Buchochromus family. Is there a particular fish that you'd like to see a profile on in this tank? If there is, let me know and, I, and I'll consider making that the next profile, Otto Fairnex Tetra Stigma, one of my favorites, of course, as you know. All right, there you have it. So there's the update. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, thank you to the Aquarium Co-op for this cool hat. They sent me a nice hat. I'll probably wear it to Aqua Shell at the end of February. So uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, as always, you are appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.